What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper in what JSON API actually is. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and you want me to continue on creating tutorials, I have created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get benefits such as a private Discord group where we could help each other. It's pretty difficult to maintain all of the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying to respond to all of you guys, the private group on Discord will be very beneficial for you guys since it's a community where we could all help each other. So if you're interested, click on the link in the description down below and let's just help each other out. Now there's a lot of different ways how I could start this course and one of them is going over a lot of examples and showing you what everything means. And I honestly think that this is actually the right way to do it. I don't want to cut off the actual programming videos later on with explanations of specific terms. So I want to do this in one or two videos and then we'll get right into coding. Whether you're making software in Java, C Sharp, Python or you're creating web based applications in Laravel or PHP, there's a lot you need to think about regarding designing your software. Think about all the best practices you want to translate into your code, your application structure, the front end, your database and way more. You might think that APIs are different, but to be honest, it's actually kind of the same and it might take time to get used to it. Now a thingy that will happen a lot are small little mistakes in your JSON file since it's pretty common to make small typos. So therefore, I think it's good to go over the structure of your JSON file. The JSON API specification states that there must be a JSON object at the root of your document, which will represent the top level of your document. So let's look at an example that I created. Every JSON document starts with an opening curly brace and ends with a closing curly brace. Whether you're creating a new JSON document or you're going straight in the composer.json file, it always has an opening and closing curly brace. Let me show that to you. If I go to Visual Studio Code, you can see that I have my composer.json file open and right here, you can see that it starts with an opening curly brace and at the bottom, it has a closing one. The lines that you place inside your curly braces needs to have a comma to show a separation. As you can see right here, we have our ID, which is equal to one, comma, type, which is equal to books, and names, which is the last one, does not have a comma. You can see that we have ID, type, and name. This is called a member, or even better, a member name. These member names have some rules that you need to follow. First off, it's case sensitive. So be aware of that. It needs to have at least one character, so you can't have an empty member right here. You can only use characters, and a member must start and end with a global character. Keep all your member names in lowercase and pick your own convention. Whether it's using snake cases, kebab cases, or camel cases, I recommend you to use snake cases. And mostly because whenever you're calling the toJSON method in your Laravel method, the model attributes will convert it into snake cases. So it's a good habit to get used to snake cases. Now on the left hand side, we are setting a member name equal to something. And in our case, it's the ID, type and name who have a value. What we've covered so far is good. So let's take it a step further. You could also pass in an attribute as you could see right here. And attributes that you pass on a resource object are pretty much the same as attributes you use on your Laravel model. So like I said, the attribute members should be an object and members inside the object can be all sort of data types, but must never be a relationship, which we will cover in a bit. An attribute can also be empty. So our type could be equal to nothing, but whenever you have that, just get rid of it and remove it. In our example right there, we have our name and publication underscore year inside their attributes member. So you might wonder why we don't add our ID that we have right above inside our attributes. That's mainly because an ID or type member are reserved on the root of the resource object. So outside of the attributes. Like I said before, sometimes you need to create a relationship inside your API because data in an application can be related to one another. A book belongs to one or more authors, and an author can have many books. I expect that by now you understand how relationships work in code, and especially in Eloquent. But what about relationships in your API? Well, like the name replies, we are going to define the relationships member, as you could see right here. 
And like the attributes member, the relationship member needs to be placed at the root of our resource object. If we compare it to the attributes, the relationships member has a couple rules that you need to follow. One of them is adding at least one of the following members. So the link, the self and related, the data and the meta. Now the link member has two types, self and related. Self is a member to link the relationship to itself. And related is used to link the relationship between resources. The data member is called the resource linkage. Instead of holding resources objects, it holds the resource identifier objects. And the last one is the meta. And the meta is an object that contains non-standard meta about the relationship. We could also pass in data. And the data gives us either a resource identifier object or a collection of resources. So in our case, we're getting back a collection of books. And as you could see on our screen, we have two books. Another feature that you use is pagination. You use this quite a lot if you work with large data sets. Whenever you're requesting a large data set, it can be quite a strain on the system to query. You can work around it by using pagination. And you can use pagination to chunk your page into smaller pieces. The way you use pagination in the API specification is through the link object in the root of your document, just at the same level as the data. As you could see on our screen, we have a data set with multiple books inside of it. So we have data, ID number one, and ID number two. Then we have the links member with four members of a pagination link object. We have the first link, we have the last link, the previous link, and the next link. Now the first link is the current link, so the first object that has been found, which is ID number one. The last one is the last one, obviously, so ID number two. We can't go back when we have ID number one because, well, ID number zero does not exist. So the previous one has been set to null. We have the next, which will bring you from ID number one to ID number two. Now, this was probably the most important stuff that you need to know about JSON API specifications. This was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.